So the first thing we need to do is uh, create a new Rails project. I'm going to do that with Rails new. Then I uh, need to specify the name of the project. I'm going to call it zeroexploit-api. We need to do dash d postgresql because um, that's the database we'll be using for now. And then I do skip test unit. Um, I don't think it actually still does anything, but whatever. Um, yeah, then I got a little strange error here with uh, Nokogiri installing. Uh, you might be missing some headers. Um, I can't exactly remember what they were because as I fixed it um, or tried to fix it, turned out I had the headers installed and as soon as I re-ran bundle, everything worked fine. So, you know, if you're going to be doing this like in Rails, then I'm going to just assume that you know how to install Rails correctly because there are many tutorials about that out there and I don't want to go into uh, how to set up Rails on your machine because it's different on every machine. I do, however, recommend that you are either on a Linux system or on a Mac, which is basically a Unix system. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this on a Windows machine, although it is possible. And if you do, uh, eventually it doesn't matter because we're going to be deploying this to Heroku anyway just so we have a server running on a, a, a proper provider. Uh, so yes, I rerun bundle, everything installs fine and then it's time to open the code I think. Is that what I'm doing here? Yes. Okay, so what we'll do is, um, for this video, we're going to just uh, take care of some user stuff. Creating accounts and uh, logging into accounts. That's what we're doing. So, first of all, I need to configure my uh, database uh, file here. So, database.yaml, I configure my development environment, the host is localhost. My username and password is both Postgres uh, on my local machine. This will be changed now that I've uh, released this video. And so I like to delete all the unnecessary comments because um, I like to keep my file sizes down. Right then, so now we create a controller, a user's controller. Rails obviously uses the MVC structure. If you don't know what that is, you should be looking that up right now. Model view controller. So all the tasks are separated, whether you are actually um, receiving signals and sending them out to models and the models, they take care of all the database stuff. The views take care of all the um, presentation of your data. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, when I say presentation of data, this can be uh, obviously HTML views but they can also be JSON views, as you will see uh, soon. Right, we need to set up a route for our endpoint. Uh, Rails has a nice way of doing that by just calling resources users, and that sets up all the CRUD routes. So create, update, delete, and also uh, edit and new and show. Right, so the create action is an action that we can post to. So we will be posting to slash users with uh, um, some JSON that uh, defines our user uh, parameters. Uh, Rails uh, has started to use strong parameters. So as you see me passing in user underscore params, I will show you in a second how that works. Um, so if the user uh, saves correctly, we just render out some JSON. Uh, we will change that soon in favor of a JSON view. But for now, we'll just render out the JSON and otherwise we render out an error. All this is going to be refined in the future, but we take everything step by step, small steps, um, you know, it's great. So in a protected uh, section of our controller, we set up the method user params. This is what uh, Rails refer to as strong parameters. We set that params must require a user object. So in our JSON, we need to have a user and then in that user, we need to uh, have a sub um, uh, hash with all the uh, parameters. And we permit only handle password and password confirmation. So uh, that um, 
uh, a smart user cannot override any other um, uh, parameters in the database by passing in a different hash. So we have to set up an attribute accessor for password. And I am setting up here one for password confirmation too, but we actually don't need it and I will delete it later. Okay, so next we will go to the gem file. And uh, again, I delete all the comments. I just think uh, it's boring to have to read through uh, those kinds of lines all the time. And just bear with me for a second. And okay, and we add uh, the bcrypt gem. That's going to allow us to do some uh, encryption on the password. And I will show you real quick how that works. Um, it has to require something from uh, GitHub, I believe. No, it has to require bcrypt. Um, that's just, the, I think it's actually requiring the, the systems bcrypt, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I know that if you use uh, bcrypt directly without bcrypt-ruby, you are running into trouble when you are moving from system to system because I believe that um, bcrypt is implemented differently on some systems. At least I had problems with that before. Um, I'm requiring secure random in the user class here. I also know that I'm making a mistake here. Uh, secure random should be all in uh, non-capitalized letters. So it's camel case there, but I will uh, fix that soon. And then I'm adding some validations to my user um, so that when I call save on it, those validations are called, uh, making sure that I'm not saving any uh, mistaken objects to the database. So uh, the handle need to be, needs to be present in the data that is being sent. It needs to be unique and the password needs to be present and the confirmation needs to uh, also be present and, and uh, the same as the password. And the length, I think I go with uh, between 8 and 32. So I might be... Uh, thinking here for a second, what am I doing? 620, uh, 632, but then like, why not make everything in that um, multiples of two? So <clears throat> yeah, uh, it becomes eight to 32 and only on create. So these validations only run on the create action. And then we call a before save method. That just means that this method is going to be called before the object is actually saved to the database. Uh, which allows us to run an encryption uh, on the password before we um, we save it to the database. So, okay, uh, we have a protected method, encrypt password. It gets past nothing because we're in the model, so it has access to self, which is in this moment the object is about to be saved. So if self the password is present so uh, and self dot password confirmation is present and then self dot salt equals a bcrypt dot engine dot generate salt and self.crypted password, which is actually the way that the password field is called in the database, is bcrypt dot engine dot hash secret self dot password and the salt. So now we have a salted password in the database. Prevents uh, to a certain extent brute forcing uh, yet, if you want to be technical about it, and that's why I removed the, um, the unneeded attribute accessor. If you want to be technical about it, um, if you store the salt in the same table as you're storing your crypted password, if anybody gets access to that table, your salt isn't going to uh, be worth its salt. Um, or its weight in salt, I don't know. Like, there is an expression that could have been used there if I spoke better English, but... Um, what am I doing now? I'm uh, just waiting. Like I'm reading this code from another screen while I'm recording this because um, 
I want it to kind of like uh, run fluidly. Okay, so next I start the Rails console with Rails uh, space C. And I, I try to create a user directly in the console. So I just call the, the model class user.create. And then I pass it a hash with handle test1 and password test test because it has to be eight characters long at least. And then password confirmation also test test. And we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's going to fail because, like I said earlier, um, secure random should have been spelled with um, a small s and a small r. So I'm fixing that right now. Secure random. Okay. Then I have to reload the console, reload um, exclamation mark. And we try it again. And then this says the database does not exist. Well, that is correct because I forgot to run my migrations. I actually forgot to run the db create command. So db colon create, rails db colon create, and it will create your database as long as your uh, database.yaml is configured correctly. And then rails db colon migrate to uh, run your migrations, which means that uh, the table will get created because we created a migration for that. And then we reload exclamation mark and run our user create command again. And we can see a begin and a commit. So that worked. So now we have a user in the database and you can just pass um, uh, a JSON hash. I will show you right now on the screen how that hash needs to look. And if you send that as a post request to your server, uh, um, to the slash users.json um, endpoint, you should be all good. It should be creating a user. And then I'm just doing for the fun of it, a user.all uh, index action so that we can see that the, the user works. Uh, what am I doing now? Oh, I, I start up the server. That's also very useful. So localhost 3000. Okay, we're on Rails, great. We don't have a root route, so we just go to users.json and we see that our um, user is returned as a JSON hash. It's using a plugin to display it a little bit better, but we also have the crypted password and the salt returned, and we don't want that because we're pretty sure that our users can figure out, or some of our users of the game can figure out what the endpoints are for the API and we might actually want to open up the API to them. So uh, as a first line of defense, we're going to make a, a JBuilder view that gives us more uh, granular control over what we want to return in this JSON. And so the way we do that is we create an index.json.jbuilder view template in the views directory of the user subdirectory. Then we call json.usersdo, json.array exclamation mark at users do user. So now we're looping over all the users and we do json.extract exclamation mark and then each user returns an ID and the handle and those should be symbols. So colon and colon. Now they are symbols. This is not going to work yet because in the controller, yes, I'm trying it again, but it will still not work in the users controller. Now I'm almost just talking to myself, like, you know, can you figure it out? Okay. In the users controller, we need to remove that render uh, act, um, command. And now it will automatically find that view. That's kind of like the magic of Rails, right? Like it will automatically try to find a view matching the type of request. And since this is a JSON request, because we're calling dot JSON at the end, it will automatically find this JSON view, which is really great. I am pretty sure this uh, the actual server is not going to be um, in Ruby on Rails, though. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to end up building the whole thing in Node.js. Um, but uh, my problem at the moment is I'm still learning Node.js. So um, it's actually quite funny. I've uh, like. Um, I've had to uh, program some Node.js in the last day or so and um, it was it was quite interesting I'm not so in love with the syntax because you know it remains to be JavaScript um, but I can see how that can uh, work and how it's uh, a lot more suitable to uh, um, like parallel and stuff or uh, uh, you know asynchronous 
Okay, so we got to use a show action as well, and we're going to need it anyway at some point. But this is basically uh, what we need to have uh, user registration uh, as an API endpoint. I mean, it's basic and we're going to uh, build it out. Um, I'm just going to also show you how to do login because then we have it and then in the next video about multiplayer we can implement in Godot uh, the, um, the actual registration UI elements and have it pass HTTP requests to our API and bring it all together basically. But we had to do this step. I know this, this channel is kind of like focused on Godot although I've only released two videos so what's focus anyway. But um, we need to do this so that we can get further into our sort of advanced multiplayer stuff. Okay, so login is we uh, need to find the user by the handle because we're going to send the handle and the password. Right? Um, what am I doing else? Probably nothing for the moment. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, so like nothing. Okay. But in present, uh, if the user is present, so like if we uh, have found the user in the database by its handle, so we know that the user exists, we're going to call bcrypt uh, engine, uh, hash secret, yes. And then we are going to pass the params password. Params is always the stuff that you send from your Godot game as a JSON uh, body to the, your server and the user.salt. So the user.salt is the one from the database. So now we can take the clear text password that the user is sending us plus the salt that we have, generate um, an encryption, the same type of encryption that we generated to store that password. So if the password clear text matches the one that we used stored and we encrypt it with the salt uh, together, then we know for sure that the password matches, right? If this is confusing, then you need to learn more about uh, encryption, hashing, and salt. Okay, so if the user crypto password equals, equals the password, return the user. Okay, now we have a login system. And it is literally that simple. This is relatively secure, relatively. If anybody sees anything insecure going on in here, then please sound off because um, I actually use this, like not just for games. So, okay, I think uh, this, is, this is where it ends um, for now. I know that uh, you may want to, to have seen a little bit more Godot, but no, we need to do this first, which we've done now. And then in the next video, First, I'm going to make another video. Okay, my dog is going crazy again. First, I need to make another video about um, the scripting language that I was working on. And then I'm going to make another multiplayer video about uh, how to use what we've just done from Godot. Okay, so goodbye and see you soon.